This is Three Questions with Brian Carpenter. Got the intro. Hey, Brian is actually from beautiful BC uh, in Canada, British Columbia. And what was cool is we were talking before the podcast and you were talking about um, you have your own podcast and we'll actually have that in, in, in the link below. But it was Chris Nessie. Who, Chris Nessie. Chris Nessie, who helped you get your podcast going. And when I first started my yes. podcast, he was, uh, he was one of the first people that reached out to me. And, and I just love um, that we have, he'd like to help me out too. And he, get, he was like telling me questions or telling me answers to stuff that I was like, what is this guy even talking about? Then now it's just kind of second nature to me, right? And it's yeah. kind of cool. So I got I to, gotta, before we even start, you know what's coming. Chris Nessie, if you're listening by any chance, you're getting the the shout out button. <laughs> Gotta get one Go of those. Chris, yes. yeah. So yeah, he's Chris, making a difference in podcasting you, land. I, I love that, and I, I just think it's you know um, I've tried to be like that, but I don't. Hopefully not, or I hope to be some extent uh, with people blogging and things like that too. So uh, it, it's great to have you, and we'll talk more uh, about why I wanted you to come on uh, in the other podcast, but uh, we've known each other for about 10 years. And uh, I know that some of the stuff that you're sharing, you are inspiring a ton of educators around the world. And as you know, as Chris is doing the same thing with podcasting, he's like the the pod father. So uh, when you think about your education career, uh, who is a teacher that inspired you and why? I'm going to go back to grade 12, which was like, oh, my goodness, that was a long time ago. But um, I'm going to shout out to Mr. John Rollins, um, who was my English 12 teacher at Crescent Heights High School in Calgary, Alberta. So I don't know if you knew if I was from, from, from Alberta. George. I didn't know that. I actually know Crescent Heights, too. Right. Is that OK? Is yeah. that that's so, is that actually in Calgary or is it just outside? That's in Calgary. Okay. That's in Calgary, just up Center Street from downtown. So, wow, that's crazy. Yeah. And, and so. so John Rollins was my grade 12 English teacher, and English was my most loathsome subject in high school. I was a good student. I could do even socials, but, like, English, <laughs> didn't like it at all. Like, loathed. Like, it was, like, way down there on right. my, you know, I'd rather go to the dentist than go to <laughs> English class, right? And uh, in grade 11, you know, the first opportunity I had to drop English, I, I, I walked into my English teacher's class that first day with the pink piece of paper and said, please sign this. And he signed it. And the next day I came crawling back with the blue piece of paper that said, let me back in. And he let me back in. And, uh, you know, cause my mom and dad kicked my butt and other people, you know, kicked my butt going, you need to do this. And I'm like, well, that's stupid. Right. Um, so anyhow, I got through English 11 with, uh, Mr. Smith and I, it was hard. It was really hard, but at the end of it, because I put the effort in, I didn't do great in his class, right. but he recommended me for the slow middle school, like the middle class, you know, like right. not English 33, right. but not English 30. Mm -hmm. I was like on the in-between and I got to hang out with Mr. Rollins, eight o'clock AM every day of the year for two semesters for English 33 X. And I did English every day. And Mr. Rollins made a huge difference because he cared about us that, you know, struggled and gave us some hope it was fantastic so shout out to mr rollins let's do it shout out to mr rollins and i wonder i wonder uh do you know if he's still around is he still teaching you know i, I haven't actually reached out to him because i my life away, went away from education mm -hmm. um you know right after high school and i just my path diverted from anything academic well not ac anything i became a chemist in university but just mm -hmm. that connection to high school just disappeared right so i'm not sure if he's still around or whatever but yeah and they they like when you tell that story i know this is like super cliche but it's the idea that you know when you feel that people actually care about you then it's much easier to have that that topic and put that that investment I, in one of the things that uh, I remember having a conversation with an administrator early on in my teaching career and I hated supervision right and I, I actually just despised it you know I feel super rushed and he pulled me out and he said I know you're not a big fan of supervision but if you looked at it as an opportunity to get to, to know kids um, mm -hmm. that you don't necessarily teach you will actually find it not enjoyable you'll find it rewarding and it will make your life easier and it, it, I, it's like one of those moments that you think differently about things and it changes you 
And I started seeing that the more I interacted with students I didn't know, the, my life became much easier as a teacher, right? It was easier in class. It was easier, um, you know, when kids were messing around uh, in ways that they maybe shouldn't have been, you know, during supervision because I had built that relationship. And the way yeah. that I look at it is really kind of... Um, I look at it as like an investment, right? So yeah, there's time put into it, but then that time will come back to you tenfold. And that 10 minutes I spent supervision enjoying those students all of a sudden made my life way easier. And I saved, you know, hundreds of minutes with classroom management, you know, dealing with incidents that took 30 seconds as opposed to, you know, three hours. So shout out to John Rollins uh, and hopefully he, he's listening to this too. So when you think about administrators though, um, and I'm sure it could be in your, you know, s- your career as a student, your career as an educator, who is an admin that you, you know, has inspired you and why? All right. My next door neighbor, he just lives across the hedge from me, um, was a principal. He was a teacher and a principal before I even started thinking about education because my former career, I was a scientist and, research scientists at a pharmaceutical company. And then, well, we got bought out, hostile board takeover and Mm. sold and laid off, right? And so my wife says, whatever you want to do, do. And so I'm like, okay, I think I want to get into education, I think. And it was a cold October night and I walked across through the yard and uh, knocked on his door and said, hey, tell me why you do what you do, right? And he brought me in and we sat for an hour and I could have been four hours, right? But him and his wife talked to me about why they are educators, what brings them joy in them, what they do. And just that, you know, they were curious that I was asking, right? Mm-hmm. And he's been there since the day one. Um, I did my PDP at SFU mm-hmm. and while I was finishing up my PDP, he's like from this driveway, he's like, carpenter you need to come work for me come to my school and i'm like what you work at a crazy place like it's a distributed learning school and uh it's not your typical classroom right Right. like classrooms and 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 you're working in an online environment or at the time it was all paper packages kind of like athabasca university used to be right back a long time ago and so um you know he's been there since the day one and uh he eventually got me into his school well, he probably set it up through HR right. to get me, right? right. And so I, I'm there now, and I love where I work. I've been I've been at AVS, the Abbotsford Virtual School, for like, this is going on, I think, my 11th year. And uh, yeah. I've watched it change from a paper-based program to now completely online to now a shift into blended learning. Right. And uh, he's been there all along the way and a huge supporter. And there came, a, came an opportunity back in 2015 for me to um, – try something else and uh, i was a digital literacy Mm -hmm. helping teacher in our district so i stepped out of avs and uh, i remember the day that i had this opportunity come in front of me and i'm like oh i'm gonna let him down and i printed out the job description and printed out the thing and i'm like walking over to the building from my portable you know kind of sauntering going oh am i really gonna do this right and i'm gonna i walked into his office and i'm like "I, i got something to talk to you about and he goes what's that and i said about this job he goes, oh, I gave him your name. And I'm like, what? So, you know, he's been there and he's like, I don't want you to leave, but I want you to do what's best for you. Right. And that'll make a difference in our district more than anything. Right. Mm-hmm. And so he was supportive and I eventually came back and we've grown a blended learning program, not just me, but other teachers and, right. you know, that we have students that come in and it's just making a difference for kids. It's fantastic. What's, it's awesome. it, what's his name? Brad Hutchinson. Brad Hutchinson, shout out. I love that. Hey, just so you know, Brian, I, I don't know if you picked it up, but you actually said doo doo. <laughs> so you know, you said doo doo. You said okay. you're, you're, so you do do. Just that's my, whenever I say that, it just kills me. I don't know why. I was like, someone else said on the podcast. Okay, so there's something I, I love, uh, I love about this story. I know there's my, there's my childish, uh, my immature uh, sense of humor there. Uh, one of the things that I love about that story, and I think it's, we often talk about this with teachers, but it's the same with administrators, is that a lot of times really great administrators see something in you that and and bring it out that you might not have, have mm-hmm. actually realized was in yourself, right? And so it's kind of neat right. to see that, and I'm glad you're still connected, and that's, that's, that's awesome. And so, um, you know, talking about your kind of experience and just kind of like, obviously just, 
kind of having this conversation with you, you, you've been doing so many different things with learning. And I'm sure that, you know, when you first entered education compared to now, there's a lot more that you know, right? And you probably feel a lot more comfortable. And when you look back at the beginning of your career, um, if you could go back and talk to yourself, what advice would you give to your first year teacher self? Um, I would say, don't do this all on your own. Um, you need mm-hmm. to ask for help sooner than later. So that's the advice. And the rationale behind that is, uh, you know, we come through teacher training and we are expected to do it all on mm-hmm. our own. We got to prove ourselves worthy of mm-hmm. being allowed to be called a teacher, right? We are not a teacher. We're a wannabe teacher at that point, And we've got to like demonstrate that we've learned all these theories and pedagogy and Mm. learning strategies and walk into a classroom and like rock it and like for six weeks it's like full on out here well that was the way my program was for full on teaching a certain subject for six weeks and the you know your your sponsor teacher sitting there observing you and watching you and like supporting you Mm -hmm. but you're on stage the whole time well like we are on stage every day but it's like life or death at that point right um and so we come through teacher training and we have this kind of mindset of like i have to be i'm invincible and Mm -hmm. i need to be invincible because people expect that of me and then as soon as you walk into a building as a now a regular teacher in your first year people are like welcome here's some stuff here's all this stuff right they open up their filing cabinets and the stuff is flowing at you but you're like no that's not my that's not my thing and you know they're being well meaning but right. we continue to have that i can do this on my own mindset right mm-hmm. um it was in my first year that i i worked at uh, one school for 6 months then i went over to another school and i was there and i had four different preps i had to do for that first semester mm-hmm. and i had resources for well two three of them because i taught one of them before and uh, i had no experience with the fourth one at all and we had a young family. My youngest was a year old at the time. And my oldest was like six in grade one. And, uh, just, I was working hard and trying to figure out how to teach all these things and like not doing well, like in that SEL educator space at all. And I didn't know what that meant. Right. Like we, that was SEL was not a thing back then. Mm -hmm. It was, it was coming. And uh, I remember, uh, a teacher at my school, his name escapes me right now, Frank Roffel. Frank Roffel, shout out to Frank Roffel. Shout out. Um, he called me out and he said, Brian, we need to go for coffee and we need to help figure out how to help you survive this thing for 18 mm. months. Wow. He goes, if you don't make 18 months, you're not going to make five years in this thing. And you, that's, then, that's pretty much going to be it. He says, like, that's my observation in the past, wow. the teachers that don't figure out how to cope. So my advice to new teachers and first year teachers is you should not do it all on mm-hmm. your own. Ask for help sooner than later. Well, and that, that's actually, uh, we're going to talk more about this in our, our longer podcast. That's one of the reasons you and I connected is um, when, when, you know, it's kind of showing social media when we first met in 2011. And one of the things that I've, you know, really kind of focused on when you look at uh, educators come in their profession. It's not just what you know, it's who you have access to and their knowledge too. Right. And taking advantage yeah. of that. And I tell, you know, new teachers, you should be so much better as uh, a new teacher in 2020, 2021 than I was in 1999, because you have access to people I did not have access to. So you have, Absolutely. To, how do you take advantage of that? And I think it's, uh, we always kind of put that on first year teachers, but it's also administrators, you know, uh, being open to that because, you know, I've heard teachers say like, if I tweet out that I don't know something, I need help, then what, how's it going to make me look? My administrator would make say that looks, makes us look bad. I'm like, if I have, yeah. you know, if you're in a position where you are asking for help, if you need it and you're punished for that, maybe that's not the place for you to work. Right. Like it's probably not a good space. So <laughs> totally. uh, yeah. I, I love that. And so I'm, I'm yeah. really looking forward to, uh, the longer conversation. I'm glad you hit the, the, the doo doo. Uh, in the podcast, I made my day, but Brian, uh, Brian, thanks for uh, being on the podcast and thanks everyone for listening.